You see that? You see it all? Duckweed. I didn't put that in there. I did put the water lettuce in there. Mini water lettuce, and that's I'm sure where the duckweed came from. So that was my fault. Oops. I the mini water lettuce in one of my fish tanks, and I just pulled the clump out and threw it in here. And that tank at one point had a whole bunch of duckweed in it, but I scooped it all out. But apparently I missed some because here, well, here it is. There's so much of it. <sighs> it's not the end of the world. Can fix that just when the, I'm gonna let that water lettuce get a little bit bigger first. Then I will pull it out and I will rinse the duckweed out of the pieces that I pull out and put some back in and then get rid of, just toss it. Hey, what's up garden friends? <laughs> Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. 92 degrees and everything is very thirsty. I did give the plants a very light watering, not a heavy one. I want to just turn the heater off for right now and uh, that should do the trick. I've been standing here staring at this for a while, just like missing the flow and the vibes of having a nice, calm, peaceful waterfall out here. A long time ago, I used to actually have like a waterfall, like a legit filter waterfall that you put on a pond back here that spilled forward into this tray that's full of biological media. And it was just so serene. It was kind of ugly and tacky, but it was very serene. And uh, I just, I don't have that anymore because I don't have all the fish in here. All those koi and everything, they got too big. People have asked me what happened to them. I talked about it a long time ago. Uh, they're off at my friends who has a giant in-ground pond where they can live out the rest of their life without as many limitations by size as they should be. Koi need a great big huge pod. So now they have that. This is pretty much just water now. There are some guppies in here that I think the fry must have come in when I brought in the cups of the water lettuce. Saw one like two weeks ago and now I'm seeing a whole bunch. So they're doing what guppies do. Now that I've noticed them, I've been sprinkling a tiny bit of food in there, but they seem to be doing okay. This is a pretty naturalistic sort of pond that just let everything do its thing. I only pull out leaves if they start to gum up the pump that's down there. Otherwise, I let things break down because it helps soften the water, which releases tannins and it's good for the soil. The plants seem to enjoy it. So while I know it's not to everyone's aesthetics, it's not crystal clear, it's technically clean and uh, it's a good water for fish, which I did, wouldn't matter because I didn't have fish, but now it's, it's, I do. All right, back to the waterfall thing. Apparently I'm just not gonna do the whole intro thing where I talk about what's going on in this video. We're just jumping right into it. There's gonna be a few things going on. The first thing that I was thinking about doing is just some little manipulations to get the nice sound of water in here again. A few months ago, I had been like online browsing water weirs. The, is that even how you pronounce it? I don't know. The kind that you put above a fountain that makes a fine sheet of water that flows out because it just seemed like the most practical thing to do with this slim shelf that's up here. But they're kind of pricey. There are some that are cheaper on Amazon, but even the cheaper ones for this size are still like 150 to $200. As neat as they are, it's still not necessarily my aesthetic. I think they're pretty, but I do kind of like water to just meander and do its thing. I don't want, I don't know. I don't like water to seem too controlled. It feels unnatural. So I had been thinking of different ways that I could like rig up some pipes to put in here, then pop holes in them so that water can come flowing down. And it just without having to get another pump was the idea. So I could just put another line off this main pump with a Y on it and a valve so I could adjust it and turn it off when I want to water plants to have a different hose. And I was just overcomplicating things. I, it just occurred to me, why don't I just take a clamp and hook the hose to right there and let it just sit up there and just, it may not look beautiful, but it's going to get the job done, right? I think it will. Maybe I've already started planning for it. See, I put a piece of really, really fake looking plastic driftwood over there. That might look nice it's having the water spilling over it. I don't know. This is an experiment. I okay. There's about to be a lot of sound of water and stuff going on. Hopefully that's not bothersome. Years ago, I had people complain about the waterfall in the videos. I don't, I don't know. I can't imagine being bothered by the sound of water unless it's like an annoying, like just like piddle. Whatever, here we go. I think I could just set this right here, clamp it onto this rod. This is done. Okay, see? Just clamped onto that pole right there. No problem. And now look, <laughs> beautiful waterfall. There's a lot of splatter. I think I'm gonna throw a filter pad up there to reduce the amount of spittage that's coming out of there because I don't want the water splattering over here onto my desk. Uh, well, that worked out shockingly well. The really surprised. I tend to go into things thinking that it's going to be really easy and then it tends to be way more complicated than I anticipated, which I don't understand why because I tend to overthink everything. So you would think that I would plan out for things being more complicated than they are. But they get more complicated because things end up breaking and stuff goes wrong. But this just, that actually worked. 
it, of course, it doesn't look like some kind of natural, beautiful waterfall, but I've got the aesthetic. Sounds like fairly peaceful water, and there's like some good flow there. Chances are, as a filter pad picks up some stuff, that'll change how the water comes down. So it'll be fun to get to see that change. Yeah. I'm pretty good with this. I think it looks nice. <laughs> Unconventional, but that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. The flowing water and the tranquility, and this is not that it really needs it, but since there are fish in here, that will help keep the water more oxygenated for them. And now there's a filter pad for the fish. But again, they've been in here for at least three weeks. About three weeks or a month ago that I put the water lettuce in here and intentionally the duckweeds that had to have been when the guppies came in and they've been fine. But uh, like I said, now that I know they're here, I've been sprinkling a little bit of food in their form and it wouldn't hurt to change out a filter pad every couple of weeks just, just to keep them happy. Once I know they're in there, gotta take care of them, right? Be kind of messed up not to. I wonder how that's going to affect the fogger. Is that just gonna like splatter all over the fog that comes out of it and make it so that it's not getting the fun little show of cloud that should be coming out of there? I suppose I could just turn it on and find out, see what happens there. I don't really like running this thing when it's super warm in here because it floats around more with the warmer air and I inhale it. Now if there's fish in here, I really don't want to be inhaling that because... Sorry, everything that says started as making sure to set a timer so it turns off and I don't forget. Uh, I don't want to inhale vaporized fish poop. Doesn't seem safe. That's another reason <laughs> to have a filter pad up there. And on that note, I should actually probably turn the UV sterilizer back on and maybe throw some carbon in here as well into the filtration since, well, I have this thing that runs when the humidity gets low, which isn't that often, but just to keep it safer. I don't, I don't want to catch some kind of upper respiratory infection. All right, so it's only affecting the fog right in the waterfall area. That's okay, that actually looks kind of cool. I could put a light down there. I, sorry for yelling, I got really excited. But that would be a decent spot. I have some pond lights that I could put in there to shine up on the driftwood, but I don't want pond lights in here if there's fish. I feel bad with the fish and the pond lights. Like, I wouldn't want to swim around and have a blinding light shining up. I overthink things. All right, that's done. The rest of this video, I have some things I want to do, but I just, I'm kind of like on the fence with it. So I mentioned last week, I have a couple of lights to replace. We're going to do some rearranging over here. That's my main priority. There's a hibiscus that must get repotted or it will die. And then maybe I might, not even maybe I might, I have to actually put a fish tank right here. I have some fish that I have coming in earlier than I thought they would be. So there's a type of fish I've wanted for a long time. You'll probably get to see them in the video. If not, then I'll put here on the screen what they are. The tank that they're supposed to go in is a tank that's not set up yet. It's going in a room that I'm like remodeling upstairs. That won't be done for like a month or two. So I need a place to put the fish. I have a really big freshwater tank inside, but it has Oscars in it. They can't go with them. I'm not going to have to cycle the tank. I mean, I'll like have to pay attention to it as if I were, but I'm using gravel from an established tank, water from an established tank, and a filter from an established tank. Talk about all that, excited about it. But so there's my like 10 minute intro. <laughs> Made of waterfall. We can call it that, right? The fountain. It's water that makes noise and it's making my heart smile, bringing me peace, making me happy. Hello from the ladder. Of course, the second I get up here, the heater turned on. So you probably can't even hear what I'm saying, can you? Well, hopefully you can. Uh, what am I doing? Why I'm up here? I'm going to move some of the plants that are down here, up here. First, I need to hang a light right there. So I'm, I'm gonna do that since the heater's on. It's, we don't need to talk about it. Just get it done. There we go. Finally, that took a minute. Probably didn't get in the shop. There was a lot of stuff on the ground. There was just, things were just scattered in ways that they didn't need to be. I didn't feel that things were grouped appropriately. Now, lots of room up top for the cactus and succulents. They can just take a little step stool out, give them a drink probably once a month. I'll keep an eye on them and see how they're looking. I can water more than that if I need to. I do need to get some plastic drip trays to put underneath those. And this shelf right here is still fairly empty, but you know, that's not going to last very long. Some of the plants that were up here really just didn't have enough space. And that was the same thing for everything down here. Some of the plants that were here, a lot of these were on the ground, but the ones that were here, like this Maxillaria tenufolia, the coconut orchid, you can see it has some yellowing in it. And I think that it's because it was just too close to the light. So by moving this reservoir up top that was able to drop it down like another four inches or so. I had been fairly worried about this plant 
not worried, more just noticing that it had the yellowing in there. And I was thinking, okay, it's time for a repot. Maybe just need some nitrogen, something like that. But uh, that's going to have to wait because it also just has gone absolutely insane blooming. Look at it. It's just full of flowers. If they're all down there on the inside, it smells phenomenal over here. If flowers on this one smell kind of like, pardon the shakiness, the wind is moving the branches around. I would say sort of like a vanilla pudding, maybe. That's, it's a sweet to vanilla scent. That's what it reminds me of. So I got the Paxacchis lutea up here. I moved one of the alocasias up from the ground. Alocasia, alocasia, I don't care how you say it. It's up there. It was down below. Philodendron gigantium variegata. This has been doing very well. It's up here. Then I moved the variegated aloe over. Aloe also has a justicia in it. That was over here, and it was just taking up way too much space. It was very large and bulbous. So it's good to have that out of there. And now there's room up here to move other plants over, smaller plants like all those calatheas that I have in the self-watering containers. Those may end up in this spot. I might have to dim down the lights, but that's okay. The geranium's still sitting up there just because I didn't really know what else to do with it. It seems fine though. I haven't, it's been a trooper. I haven't had to do much with it. And eventually like there's little tomato seedlings down here. Oh, and a weed. That's a weed. That's what that is. That, does, that shouldn't be there the tomato seedlings right back there. There they are. And then all of the artichoke seedlings, they're getting kind of large. I'm gonna hit a point here where those need to be bumped up and moved to their own shelf. And this would probably be a good place to put those. So just making some room. And uh, I have a bunch of begonias that need a better spot. They're not really liking it over here by the pond. Mainly this dragon's wing pink. I think it's just too much heat for it. Although it does seem like it's just now starting to adjust the things. It has some new growth coming out the tent, so. Ow. It is wait and see. The temperatures outdoors are starting to get much more stable and that's making it easier to control things in here. Like, as of tomorrow, I think it's supposed to be like 70, I believe. Something like that. And then the coldest temperature in the 10-day forecast is like 31 or 32. So uh, tomorrow I'm moving the windmill palms out. Probably the mule palms are going to be freeing up a lot of space over here from those plants. I can't wait to do that. It's going to be so nice to get some of the greenery outdoors and I also changed this light bulb. That dang thing's been burnt out for like, well, I don't know. Since like last October, November, I actually hit it with the pole and the bulb went out. So I hadn't changed it and I really needed to. I just, I couldn't get the ladder over here because I, I packed plants in here where I needed the ladder. The, the windmill palms were in here. Those were right here taking up a ton of space. So the windmill palms are in the driveway already. It's the mule palms and like the Mediterranean fan palm and pindu. There are a lot of more. Well, I'm sure you'll see it if I get around to doing that in this video then those will go outside and that'll free up some space. I'm glad that's done. If I put the ladder away, I've been getting tired of having to walk around that thing. I just didn't see a reason to move it when I was waiting for the hanging hardware to come in so I could get this light hung up there. And yeah, so that's done. Got the succulent shelf looking good, the to be determined shelf, and then the larger plant shelf over here. Yeah, feels good to have that done. Metanilla, look at it got a great big gigantic okay i keep forgetting this new camera the zoom bit intense i'm sorry hope i didn't make any motion sick there they're just loving life over here it does have some crispiness up there from that hot air blowing around it but it's still throwing out blooms just left and right well not left and right it's two it has one right there one right over here it's getting ready to open up and there's another small bud inside one of those other growths that i saw the other day so let me just must be happy despite the crispiness that's probably from a time when I was playing around with the heater and just was having too much fun with it. And I was like, oh, let's turn this place into a sauna. That's, I probably did that. That's more than likely my doing. Okay, I am spent. It's been a long day. I did more than just throw a little waterfall together and then do all that. Well, actually, it's been two days. The whole entire day and a half, almost two days has passed since I set that up. It was tax time. The YouTube taxes are due March 15th. So, did all that, my brain is fried. I don't know if there's gonna be a Wednesday video this week. If not, I'm so sorry. My eyes hurt from all the spreadsheets and everything. I can't imagine sitting in front of the computer for an additional 10 hours doing editing. I think I'm gonna take this Wednesday off. My apologies. I don't think my brain can handle it. And then I also got the back of this tank painted up. It's not like the most beautiful thing. I was going for like a faux rock kind of got there. Just worked with what I had. 
I only had gray paint, so gray it is. I don't know if this thing even holds water. It's never been used. I got it on clearance for like 40 bucks a couple of years ago. If it doesn't, can make a nice terrarium, though it's not going to help with my situation right now. I kind of like that. I think that looks nice. It's not too distracting. I wanted to do an acrylic pour on the back of this. If you've ever seen acrylic pour in glass, it's so beautiful. But I thought that might be a bit much and distracting. I just kind of wanted to keep it looking as natural as possible. And gray paint's the only thing I had around, so... I didn't want to spend any money if I didn't have to. Didn't want to spend any more money than I needed to. So I just need to clear this area out, bring the tank stand in, and then uh, fill this with water, see if it'll hold water. And then I'm going to drain it out and pump it full of water from the tank inside, get some gravel in there from the tank inside and get, well, you'll see. But for right now, time to call it a night. I've done enough. I am tired. Hey, Toby. How you doing? How you doing, baby Toby? I just realized y'all haven't seen the dogs in the video. Dogs haven't been around. None of the pets have been around. Turbo, you gonna say hi? You too busy looking out the window? Watching the Nature Channel? Picking up down at look what he's done to that window. <laughs> Y'all are so nasty, messing up the Turbo, you Turbo. <whistles> hey Turbo. Hi. He's, yeah, he's not not gonna get to see Turbo. Not for a little bit. We'll have some time with the <laughs> We'll have some time with the pets later on. I also realized after I finished that last clip that I do need to get that tank full of water to see if it leaks, so not done for the night quite yet. All right, let's do this. Put that in there. Um, hello, water, where are you? There we go. Oh, good morning, Turfo. How you doing, baby? Oh, nice stretches. Look at those stretches. It's morning, if you couldn't tell, and it is an absolutely gorgeous day. Here we go, obligatory. Pet moments. Hi, pumpkin. You give everybody a kiss. You a kiss. You so sweet, pumpkin. Charlie, he's passed out up there. You want out? I know you want out. You always want outdoors. Yeah, there you go. Go on. <laughs> what? Did you change your mind? Did you change your mind, baby? It's a beautiful day. Go on. Go run around and play. Okay, or not. That's fine. Be chill. I'm okay with that too. Brought a few of the plants out. Just a few. Windmill palm larger windmill palm and then a couple of the recurvifolias, which yeah, they're doing okay. They spend more time in the garage than usual and their than usual than usual and their center growth is pale. Something always makes me nervous, but that is still in there nice and firm, so they should be okay. Probably should have hardened those, I say those, because there's another one that was a little bit more on the struggle bus, so I kinda tucked it away. Where it's more protected there underneath that frond. Yeah, uh, bringing those out just for a few hours a day and then slowly introducing them back to being outdoors probably would have been smart, but here we are. And actually, I moved these out like two weeks ago, so they weren't inside anywhere near as long as the windmill palms were, which could use some water and some pruning. Gotta get these cleaned up. Okay, back to the grow space. The tank held water. It's been a good, I don't know, 14 hours since I filled it up. The only thing I was a little bit concerned about was temperature because the water was 81 degrees when I came out here when I had this lid on top of it. However, I think once the filter's in there and the water's circulating and uh, I have a, the other circulation fan on, that should solve any temperature issues. And it, also, it's not that hard to cool the water. You just plug a fan into a thermostat with an end that goes in here. It's the same kind of thermostat you put on an aquarium heater. And when it goes outside of a range you don't want it to, have that fan start hitting it. Having air just blowing across the side of the glass, that alone should cool it. I'm also going to have a heater in there, so a little bit of redundancy, but it, none of that matters. This all seems good. I have a pump over here. This pumps the freshly made salt water into the tank when I'm cleaning it, and I just brought it out here because it, like, gets almost every bit of water out, and I think I'll just use that to water some of the plants that are over here because they could use it. They're kind of thirsty. There you go. You, you see that? Look at that. That's so annoying. This is why I like to have a good lip on my plants, a good distance between the surface of the soil and the top of the pot, because look at that. That's so annoying. This is good timing. They're getting thirsty, look at that. All wilty and droopy. Not enjoying life so much. Fuchsia's looking pretty good. That's nice. I wasn't sure how that was going to be doing because I had the broken light up there for, I don't know, maybe a week. I guess that's not that long. And there's, there's a window right there. So that helps a lot. You get these heliconias. Finally starting to see some growth coming up out of some of these. And I have this alocasia 
Okinawa Silver. No, 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 no. Silver Dragon. Right there that I thought was dead. It did that thing all Ocasius do where they just randomly melt and die back. and But you can kind of sort of see. Got a new growth coming up and the center is still nice and firm. You see that? Look at that. See how low the water is? Uh, there's so much reflection. I hate filming through glass. That's sort of a better look. Almost all the way down to the very bottom. Now look at that. There's barely anything left in there. Just a smidge. Nothing that can't be soaked up with a towel. And I'll just leave that. That can stay for right now. I will get gravel from the aquarium inside, and then I will use this pump to pump water out here from the tank inside, and then this will... We'll cut back to this later when everything's done-ish. Maybe. I don't know. I have some other things I need to do out here. Oh, this light. What a piece of junk. Look at that. Look at all the space. They could have put a bigger bulb in here. This is a 24-inch full-spectrum bulb they put in there. They make lights for 30-inch tanks, so that would be a... I think the bulbs are like 28 and a quarter, something like that. And they make they make three-foot bulbs. They're like 34 inches long. They could have put a, a bulb in here that goes all the way across this. But no, Aquion said, screw y'all. We're going to save some money. No one's going to know a difference, which is just stupid. I don't like that. doesn't matter. I'm not using this. <laughs> Anyways, I have a glass top that will go out. You'll see. Next part of the whole tank process. Got this pump in the main tank that's pushing water all the way out through the kitchen out to the garage, into the grow space, right into the tank. Now it's filled up all the way. I know the water looks icky. It's actually not. It's crystal clear, but there's no light on top of the tank and the background's gray. So that's how that is. I've got my rocks laid out. Just need to pick out which ones I want to use, give them a rinse and a soak overnight, and pick back up in the morning. I think I'm going to hold off on showing the tank until I get some more work done. There are a few things I wanted to do in the meantime. Uh, also, I just edited everything prior to where I picked up with the pump inside the tank. Oh my gosh, that audio. I'm back to my old microphone. I put a valve on this hose here so that you can slow down the flow somewhat because that was really like coming through super strong in some of the clips and then not in the others. <sighs> that was a very bad microphone. I have this pot here. Isn't she cute? So precious. All oh, and just peaceful. I grabbed some pet grass to toss in there. Just thought it might look kind of fun having some grass coming out the top, come through, cut that in half. Okay, let's split apart very easily. Tuck that in there. Back with some soil. Oh, how cute. She's so precious with her grass coming out the top. I think I'll probably give this a good chop. I'm going to go probably about 50% of the way through like that. Saw right through it, right in half. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So just because this grass when it gets to a certain height it starts to flop and look really funny and it can be really hard to keep it hydrated and since i've just repotted this it just i thought it just made sense to go ahead and give that a trim encourage some more root growth and for things to get going in there i'll repot the remainder back into that container this is i know it was unnecessary i've had this sitting around for a long time and i've had the grass for a little while too so it just it just made sense so there's that i hope you enjoyed it was i not supposed to do that Lots of different things happening here. With the wheatgrass, are you not supposed to cut that up? And I don't think you are. I probably should have just put some soil into the top of that container, sprinkled some seeds, and just waited a week. Maybe don't do what I just did. I don't think you're supposed to do that. You can trim that stuff, no problem. But I'm not. I don't think you're supposed to just go tearing it up at the roots. Oh, we'll see what happens there. I started to work on some more repots. Got to a stopping point where I realized that some of the things should really be in separate videos and not necessarily in this vlog so I got all set up to do them and well no I'm not going to. This bird's nest fern has been doing very very well but I've been having some trouble keeping it hydrated so I decided to repot it. It's going to have its own separate video because this is a plant where I get asked for updates fairly frequently about the plant so it would make more sense I think to have that someplace separate from the vlogs where you don't have to like skip around and try and find the information so it was nice that I got started on that, but not right now. Brought the orchid over here. It's nice having that on the desk, sitting close to it, smelling that beautiful fragrance. It smells divine. I know I already talked about it, but it really, really, this orchid smells fantastic. And this is a very, very easy to grow orchid. So if you're intimidated by orchids and you think that you shouldn't be growing them, give this a try. Maxillaria tinfolia, the coconut orchid. They're relatively inexpensive and easy to find. Those things will vary with where you live, but typically relatively inexpensive and easy to find. Pretty easy to care for. I did a video on this 
plant a couple of years ago, I think, if I did. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> the channel's been around for a while. Sometimes I forget which plants I have and haven't talked about. But if I did, I'll have it at an end card at the end of the video. Or no, I'll just link it down in the description. That way, if you want a rundown on the plant, something you're curious about keeping, you can check that out. Or check out some other orchid channels. There are some great, fantastic orchid channels out there. Like Ninja subscribers down in the comments fairly often has a channel. Check out Ninja's channel. Orchid content, lovely person. Very nice in-depth videos, highly recommend. Okay, so remember at the beginning of the video when I said that there was a hibiscus that if I didn't repot it, it was going to die? Well, it, it, <laughs> here it is. Doesn't even matter it's not in focus, you can tell. It's not looking very hot. I gave it a repot. <laughs> Looks so much better, doesn't it? It's going to take some time. So this hibiscus was originally in this tiny little pot here for like two years. So that was my fault. Should have repotted it last year. I have liked having it in that smaller pot because this is a hibiscus that I move back and forth into the iguana cage. Hence why there aren't many leaves on it because the iguana ate most of the foliage. And I do that like every other probably two months. I have a rotation of plants I use for the iguana. The hibiscus, nutritious. They enjoy munching on it. They like the flowers, the flower buds and the leaves, but it can only take so much. So I put it in the enclosure it munches on it and then I take it out and then uh, let it flush back out and then repeat. So I have a few different hibiscus and various other plants that I do that with. I pulled this one out of the enclosure probably a month ago and it just was not responding, which obviously, right? That pot is way, way, way too small for a plant this size. There's still some flex, well, the camera really, it just, it only wants to see the orchid back there. There's still some flex within these branches, so it's okay. I don't know if okay is the right word. I think it will be okay. Typically, when I repot a hibiscus, I will give them a good prune, like 50%, help them flush back out. But since this one only has a few leaves on it, which look pretty yellow in the camera, they're, they still have some green in them, not a ton, but there's some chlorophyll in there. I'm gonna hold off, like, I think for two weeks, probably no longer than that, before giving this a prune. And then I'll cut it back by 50% and it'll hopefully be able to take off and have a second shot of life. For the hibiscus, I just, I use Espoma potting mix. I've talked about it a lot. I like that potting mix. And I added a very small handful of cotton burr compost in there. I've noticed the hibiscus seem to like that. The latency compost, they appreciate too. The cotton burr is just what I had closest. And, and I made sure to leave a nice big gap in here so that this plant can get nice, thorough, heavy waterings without having to do that little trickle thing that I was doing with that fern earlier. The growing hibiscus has been different this year. Well, not all year, but since the new heater was installed. Usually when I'm growing hibiscus out here in the grow space, depending on the winter and how warm I was able to keep it in the past, the main goal was just to keep them going. So like they would look similar to this throughout a lot of the winter, usually a few more leaves in this, but not much. I'd put them in a spot where they got bright, filtered light, nothing direct beaming on them for hours at a time. And uh, I didn't water them the same. So we didn't water them the way we do with when plants are actively growing, where we hit them really hard with water and let that flush all the way through and then sometimes repeat that two or three times depending on the plant and how much water they need. When I was growing them with the cooler temperatures, it was more just like a pretty generous surface watering. And if it flushed out the bottom, that was okay, but I wasn't trying to repeat the process. If the temperatures aren't warm, then they had to worry about rot. Keep that in mind and not oversaturate the plants. It's not actively growing, but it's not pulling that water. It's not using that water. Things are much more toasty out here since getting that new heater installed. So I wanted to make sure that this was potted into something that would hold more moisture than I would typically use. And that's really nice. When potting houseplants, because of the situation with the grow space, not necessarily being able to keep it really, really warm, I always had to keep in mind that if I'm repotting a plant that I should not just use like the typical potting mix that I would prefer for outdoors because the difference between growing them outdoors and indoors is fairly drastic when temperatures aren't very warm in here. So if I use a potting mix that holds onto a ton of moisture, not necessarily a ton, but really just a standard potting mix, a potting mix that they really enjoy outdoors when it's nice and warm and sunny, that that tends to be like the kiss of death for certain plants when you bring them inside if you're only able to keep things between like 55 and 70. It's been nice not having to worry about that as much. I still keep it in mind, but it's not something I'm as concerned about as I was in years past. All right, I talked about this bunch of 
sticks here that aren't very pretty to look at for way too long. That's that. That's why I'm not cutting it back, though typically I do think that that would be a good idea. I'm gonna go put this on that lower shelf I freed up on the gross face and uh, get back to working on the fish tank. Hopefully there'll be an update on that fairly soon. So just waiting for things to come in the mail and getting things moved around and you'll, you'll see. I just <laughs> put the hibiscus away and then was looking over here and saw a little goldfish in here. There's one goldfish in here. So I've been inhaling the vaporized fish poop this entire time. I feel bad I forgot it was in there. So the outdoor pond, I thought the bullfrogs had eaten all of the fish last year and uh, they pretty much did except for one. So I was outside when there was a good thaw, like, I don't know, maybe two months ago? Not, not quite two months ago. Anyways, we had a good thaw and the pond, like the surface of the ice thawed out and there was just one tiny little baby gold. I felt so bad because I didn't put the de-icer in the pond like I normally would for when I have the fish outside during the winter time. And so that poor thing had been out there. I mean, it's okay, it's fine. I just, I felt bad for it. So I scooped it up and brought it in here and had completely forgotten about it until just now. So, yep, it's all right. It's not starving. There's all that leaf litter and stuff on the bottom for it to munch on. And I'm now that the guppies are in there, I'm throwing food in there. It's seemingly happy fish. Here's a better example of what I would prefer my hibiscus to look like during the winter time, minus the chemical burns. That's from peppermint oil. I used the diluted peppermint oil to do a spray when this had some aphids on it. And it did what the hibiscus usually do when I use the peppermint oil. It works great for the pest, but hibiscus tend to be one of the plants out here that don't always respond that well to it. That was a while ago though. It's flushed out with new growth. Seems to be enjoying life. I would prefer this to be a slightly deeper green, but it hasn't been that long since they opened up mealybug. Always out here squishing the mealybugs. Now this lighter green growth that should deepen out fairly soon. I think it's been open for about a week or so. That should get darker like the rest of the foliage. Pretty big contrast to this one, huh? Yep. That's all right. It'll be okay. It's got a repot it's under some lights, fresh soil. It's just going to need some time. It'll be okay. Hibiscus are fairly tough. An exciting discovery over here this morning. This right here is an F. Lander that showed up, well, as I thought, dead in the mail a few weeks ago. It was in a video. It was just total mush. It had gotten lost in the mail. It wasn't the vendor's fault, but the stem was still sturdy. So I kept it out here and that eventually rotted away. And I almost threw this plant away about, I don't know, three or four days ago, but I decided not to. I wanted to give it some more time and then got some fresh growth coming up. So yay, not dead. Also the Hilo Beauty Caladium from the Hertz Hall a few weeks ago that has some new growth coming out. It popped this one open a while ago and it's looking pretty good. And now it has this one coming out. And I would say, yeah, probably about now I could go ahead and cut out the full hitch that's all flopped over and sad from the shipping. That's normal. Those are plants that don't ship well, so I fully expected it to wilt and lose some of its old foliage. I'm also pulling out some more weeds while I'm over here. You know things are going pretty well when you gotta weed your pots in March. I shouldn't have done that. I need to pick that up. I actually noticed recently that there are weeds popping up in the bottoms of a lot of these containers. It's the task I really should probably set aside some dedicated time to, to going out and pulling out all those tiny little not that, those are tomatoes. Can you see the little, little bitty tiny weeds in there? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, and it looks like got a fresh flower opening up here. A couple of them. You can't see that. Upside down and a little bit wonky and washed out. Another excellent orchid for beginners. They grow pretty much no matter what. Really sturdy. This one's been flowering off and on for the last several weeks. There's a tiny little ant in there. I'm gonna let it live because I don't have a free hand to get it out of there. The ants do really enjoy this. That's what those tiny black dots are. I thought it was safe by having it hung up from the ceiling, but apparently not. They also smell really nice too. This one is, I should have shown the tag. I'm sorry, here we go. This is the North Miami. So it's a Brassavola Catlia BC. So it's not a Brassavola nodosa fully. It's a mix. Very pretty. Very happy plant. Very easy plant. It's making me feel great seeing things growing and flowering. One of the ways we know things are going okay. I also moved the geranium down to this bottom shelf. Yeah, I had it sitting up here earlier when I was talking about uh, something. I don't know. It, there's too much light up here for it. It was doing well. I, well, it wasn't doing well. That's not true. It was flowering. <laughs> very, very, very prolifically flowering. I mean, look at all those. But the plant itself looks like total garbage. Nice and 
firm and everything, but I think that it was maybe a bit too intense up there. So I'm gonna see how it likes things down here. And uh, this probably, I should give it a cut back too, shouldn't I? I don't want to, but I really should. Hey, baby, you back outdoors? You need to go outside? It's been a couple days. I've noticed I picked the camera up and he's just like, yeah, let me outside. Remember this time, well, not this time last year. So July through, I don't know probably mid-October to, no, probably all the way up until November when I would film with this dog around. When he was much, much, much smaller, he would just bark and bark and bark. Oh, oh I do not miss that. Do not, I do not miss that. Turned into such a good boy, haven't you, Turbo? Turned nine months a few days ago, took him to the vet, got a weight on him, 90 pounds. That's a big baby. Anyways, been a couple, oh wait, no, you can't see that yet. I'll cover up that address there. Fish just got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these floated and then uh, while they're floating, I will take another look at the plant rack. And I just, I feel like I really should go ahead and prune back those geraniums and maybe the hibiscus. It's been a couple days since that last clip. I gave things some time to hydrate and uh, it's probably good by now. They should be. You all ready to come? Okay. Oh, I forgot, creepy snowman's still out there peeking through the window. <laughs> Should probably go ahead and bring that inside. All right, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because the main objective here is to get the fish floating. They've been in a box, they need to get out of here. But look at this fun note they left me. So sweet, thank you so much for your support and trust in our team. I hope you enjoy your new fishy friends and the plants. The pearl weed is gorgeous. Thanks again, Kendra. The lovely personal touch. Thank you, Kendra. Also the nails, I was doing more potting so there, I need to just, I don't, should I start painting them? I don't know. Heat pack. Still warm, that's a good sign. Oh, there they are. Nice, good size too. Some alder cones, throw these in the tank, they sink to the bottom. Bag of pearl weed, also known as baby tears. Fun plant to have in the tank. Some moss, get to see some more of that. I gotta get to the fish first. I also, I ordered some bio media just cause I was getting a little bit low. I wanna make sure to be able to fill up a box. So that's another reason that that's in there. Yeah, I know, y'all don't care. How about the fish? Emerald dwarf resboras. Tank bread. They don't have any color on them because they've just been in the box. That's going to be the same thing with the other fish. Here they are. Oh, these are spotted cribenzies, dotted tail cribenzies. They're not going to color up probably for a while. None of them will. I need to come over here, turn the light off on the, I didn't even really show you all the tank. Okay. So I've decided to forego doing anything with aquascaping just for a few more days because I'm waiting for another big bunch of plants to come in the mail, but it's all set up. The stonewash background didn't really work out because once the light's on, you can't even tell that that's what's going on there. Like the, you can't tell. It is much more noticeable with the light off. So that's nice, I guess, for the evening time. I'm not sure. Last lid came in the mail, new light came in the mail, but it has a broken leg on it. So it's not proper. Actually, I ordered a different one because I'm not crazy about this light. It's not bright enough for my liking for the plants. Need to shut up for a minute and get these poor fish floating. The light, it's a Hyger. It's a fairly common, affordable brand find on Amazon. It's an LED full spectrum light. They have tons of different lights that all seem to be identical, but they show up under different listings. And I had a 36 watt and a 60 watt light in the cart and I was going to order the 60 watt and I accidentally ordered the 30. So I didn't really want this light anyway. So the fact that it came in broken, I don't really care. There's a new light coming tomorrow. I'm not going to get rid of this though because these are waterproof to an extent. So I think that I will still use it as a full spectrum light over here on the grow shelves. So there's a spot where I could maybe use a little bit more light. So that's what that's what I'll do with that one. So as much as I had hoped to be able to do like a big aquascape reveal, that's not happening in this video. If these things take some time. And you know, I'm gonna wait till the fish are released to do any more talking about the tank just because the reflections are so bad without the light on. How's that sound? Hopefully okay. So the lights that are over here are water resistant, like that says they're splash proof or splash safe, I think is how they phrase it, except for these over here. They're all LEDs, but these two are just fluorescent tubes, like a normal shop light and I put full spectrum plant LEDs inside of them. I've talked about this a few times and people have asked me about the lighting. I have not noticed a tremendous difference really at all between 
these LEDs which are actually produced and made for plants versus these just Honeywell shop lights that I pick up from Sam's Club. It's been several years I've been doing this setup and I haven't noticed a difference at all. And at one time I did have some plants on this space over here. I think there were alocasias that were both over here and over there. And again, pretty much no difference. So if you're wondering, there's that. All right, prune time. It could use it. Doesn't it look a lot better already? Right? It's even some blah. blah. <laughs> oh, what I was trying to say there. Now that this is hydrated, I'm not as concerned about it. I'm going to go ahead and just give it that cut. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give it that cut back. I said that and then my clippers hit the light. That could have been really bad. The geranium, I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. That's probably doesn't seem like that makes sense. I just would like to see how it responds to being in a different spot where it's not as close to the grow ice before I start chopping away at it. Because it'll still flush back out from the inside. It's already doing it. You can kind of sort of see some tiny growth in there. So I just, I don't know. I don't want to go overboard. Since I have my snippers, may as well get those caladium leaves out of there too because they're shading some of the plants that they're laying on top of. Also, my ficus died. It has some fresh growth coming up from the inside, but I do think that I should probably go ahead and get this pulled out of here if I can. What's going on? This one. It started going way downhill before I got the new heater and things were pretty chilly over here. It has a little bit of growth showing up inside of it, but honestly, I don't really feel like messing with it. I'd rather just get rid of that one. Freed up a little bit of space down below. And then I have a lot more space over here because I had some plants that I was holding in a small tank on the shelf. Those are in the tank behind me. So look at there's room for more things. Doesn't mean I'm going to get more things. I mean, you know, I probably will but not necessarily soon. Oh, I really shouldn't, should I? Because I need to get these artichokes. Those need to be pulled and moved into their own pots pretty soon. Like probably within a week or so. They're about ready. Okay, I'm gonna let the fish adjust and acclimate, get them released, and then pick back up and talk about the tank some more. All right, been several hours. Fish have had a chance to adjust and acclimate. They still have a ways to go. It's only been a few hours, right? Generally gonna take them a week two weeks to settle in so their colors are kind of blah a little bit boring right now but not a big deal they will color up so the deal with this tank I just want to really bring in the point that I was making earlier about how uh, the only reason I'm able to do this is because I'm using materials from a tank that's already been set up it's already cycled so all the good bacteria you want to get going in your tank to get them running it's already here the water's from another tank the gravel's from another tank and the biological media in the filter and the filter sponge are from another tank. A tank that's been running for about two and a half, well, it's been running for like a decade, but I haven't had any fish added to that aquarium in about two and a half years, so I don't have to worry about there being any parasites or pathogens, anything like that, that I wouldn't want to transfer into a new tank. It's still something to keep an eye out for. Just because you haven't introduced anything to the tank doesn't mean it's not there and Perhaps the fish that are in the tank have already dealt with it and have some sort of immunity to it. Or perhaps it's something that just doesn't affect those type of fish that are in that aquarium. So I, typically it's a good idea to just start from scratch. There's still going to be some cycling happening because the sand and the rock, that wasn't in the tank. So that's all fresh and new. The coconuts are new. And then, I mean, even the plants, you know, there's going to be bacterial colonies that form on those as well. So I'll just be testing the water every single day and doing water changes as needed as the tank seems like it needs it and I have an arsenal of chemicals and methods at my disposal if it does look like there's a bacterial spike with the ammonia or nitrite that could be an issue but that shouldn't be a problem. I also I realize that this is a plant channel so I don't want to go super in depth with the tank or the care. But since it was going to be out here in this growth space, I figured it would be a little bit weird for it to just magically show up. So I thought I would like lightly vlog the process as I did and uh, explain why it's even out here. It's kind of fun though. I, I don't hate having the tank out here. It's not really practical because during the summer, I think it'd be pretty difficult to keep this water cool because it will get really hot in here. But as it is right now, I haven't had any problems. I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video or at some point, it's been nearly two weeks this video with the different things that have been going on. So uh, my memory is a little bit uh, and fuzzy there. 
but I think I mentioned that at one point the water was 82 degrees. I went ahead and I added another thermometer and then I added another thermometer just for some redundancies because that seemed really extreme. I had my hand in the tank, it didn't feel that warm and both the other thermometers were reading 77.8. I did still set a fan up on the ground that is run to a thermostat that goes to a probe back here on the glass. So if the water hits 79, the fan will kick on and cool the water back down to 78. But that hasn't happened yet. And that heater, it's been running. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. I also, when I set this up, after filling it to see if it held water, I scooted it over just a smidge so it's not as much in the line of the heater. There's all that. There's all the background. That's what's happening there. I haven't bothered putting the plants down into the gravel, as you can see. I just don't think there's a reason to when I still have a week to wait until the rest of the plants show up. I just don't wanna add any more stress to the fish than is necessary. So I figure I'll just leave them as they are. They're fine and they're little containers for a few more days. That's not going to hurt anything at all. And even as it is, it doesn't really matter. I'm going pretty simplistic with the aquascape in here since I'm gonna be draining this down and moving it back into the house and to that room when it's done being redone, when it's all finished painting and everything. So in a couple months, I'll just drain this out. It'll be basically what you just saw just like this, except when I do that, I will be bagging up the planted gravel that's underneath the sand so that it can't run all over the place. See all the black dots that are in there? That's because I just mounted it up and put sand over it. I just capped it with sand. I usually prefer to put all that gravel that the plants need the nutrients from and uh, put it into mesh bags like a pantyhose with the, something like that works just fine. That way the roots can go down into that and then it doesn't get all over the place, but I didn't have any of those materials at my disposal. I did order some, they got delivered to the wrong house. So I just went ahead and moved forward with it. I figured it doesn't matter because I don't know if I'll be keeping the sand when I actually move the tank. I don't really know. I like sand in an aquarium, but Cribenzies, which are the cichlids that came in that I was really excited about, these little dwarf cichlids, they tend to like things more on the dark side. It doesn't need to be dark, dark, right? But too much brightness might be stressful for them. Things are pretty bright in there as it is. There is that more powerful light coming in the mail. That's more for the benefit of the plants, but there's also a lot more plants coming. So there'll be lots of dense areas for shade and for hideouts. I have these coconuts in here. There's three of them spread around for those fish. There are fish that do like to have their own little dwellings. In my experience, they like to have a lot of variety, a lot of places to go to change things up, helps reduce aggression, though they're not a cichlid that they can be nippy, especially when they're breeding, but otherwise, I've never really had many issues with them except for with large fish. So if I were to throw like some angelfish or something in here, which I don't think I would do because the tank isn't really appropriately sized for that, at least not for mature ones, they would probably get upset about that and go after the angelfish. But lots of little fish like the bardanios that are in there, they don't care. The guppies, they don't care. They're little like wild type guppies, so they're even smaller. Very, very, very tiny, dainty fish in here with them. There are some snails. I'm not going to be putting any shrimp in here unless they're very large. I've kept the Cribenzi cichlids with shrimp before and it was okay, but only with really big ones. And they'll almost always eat the babies. At least that's how it's worked for me. But if things are planted very densely and there's plenty of rock work and areas for the shrimp to hide, that might not be a problem. None of that matters because this is very temporary. This is just for a couple months and then I'll be moving it and then can make more final decisions. There are six of those Cribenzi cichlids in here. These are Cribenzis titanianus, titani, I can never say it. Striped Cribenzis or dotted Cribenzis. There are like different subgroups based on where they come from. They have some slightly different appearances to them. These are just the regular kind. These haven't been given any sort of subgroup. They're just pretty and fun to look at. The fish that has a lot of character. When I get this tank actually planted up, and get it looking prettier than it is right now, which will hopefully be sometime next week or the week after. I'll get some better shots of the fish themselves. Right now, I don't want to push in too much with the camera because they're still stressed out. They're feeling shy from, you know, having been thrown in a box and everything that they've been through. So just kind of want to give them some peace and tranquility for now. And this isn't like a final reveal. This is just a, hey, here's what I managed to get done for the fish. And really, if it weren't for the fact that this was going to end up being in the background of videos whenever I'm out here vlogging, I probably maybe would have considered just leaving this, not, not probably not bare bottom, but with a very thin layer of some sort of substrate on the bottom, a bunch of loose plants or epithetic plants like this down here. That is Anubius Nana Petite. It might just be Anubius Nana, I can't remember. That's an epithetic plant, does not need to be, or shouldn't be, planted into a substrate. Same thing with this microsorum. 
over here that's a narrow leaf java fern. Just plants that you can just sort of drop in and leave them alone. So they would have had that and then all of the media that's been seasoned, as I guess you would say, from the other tank. I thought I should like attempt to make it look nice since it's going to be in the background of videos as I move forward and do things out here for a while. I have driftwood to put in here as well. I like to make sure that there's rock, driftwood, and lots of different stuff. Even just having snails helps leave behind a biofilm. That can be beneficial to the tank just for like trying to establish an ecosystem. But the driftwood is still releasing tannins in a bucket and then dumping it and refilling it and dumping it and refilling it. I'm going to wait until they're not releasing quite as much to put them in here, but they can still be releasing some. Whew, almost lost my words there. As I've talked about with this pond over here, the tannins, they just help soften the water. The Crebenza cichlids that are in here, they're fine with some tannins in the water as long as the TDS, the total dissolved solids, that's a term we use with plants fairly often, right? As far as water purity with like pitcher plants, carnivorous plants, orchids, those things. Calatheas too sometimes, plants that are just sensitive to having high levels of TDS. Same thing with the fish tank. The Crebenzas, they are from streams in a Western Africa, equatorial Western Africa, where things are mountainous and tropical. And it's not the same as when we think of African cichlids that like the water with a higher pH, more hard water. These are stream cichlids from the fun, pretty jungly, lush, mountainy areas where the water is going to be more soft. I had mentioned when I was looking at these rocks last week when I bought them that I thought that they may be a problem just from what looked like there being an okay amount of calcite in them. I've read about it, the mountain stone from Carib Sea, and it says from Carib Sea that it won't alter the pH, so that I guess we'll find out. So far the pH has remained stable. There haven't been any issues with ammonia, nitrite. There's some nitrate. I think it's at about 20 parts per million is what it said this morning. That's totally fine. That's about where I like to keep things for a plant to tank. Okay, that's everything. I am going to repaint the background though. It, that didn't work. If I were to light it from behind, then that would probably show off that more stone look that was there, but I really think that it would be better to just strip that paint off. It's really easy to take a flat edge razor blade, scrapes right off. That's actually why there's nicks and holes and everything over there. It's just from hanging the filter. It pulled some of the paint off. I didn't use a very heavy layer of paint, but I think a darker background would be better. It'd make the colors of the fish pop more, and it might be more soothing to the fish themselves. Because as it is, this is pretty bright. It looks a lot brighter on camera. Let me bring down my levels here so you can... Yeah, no. I don't know what kind of screen you're watching this on, but this is about more accurate to what it looks like in person. The camera tends to blow it out and brighten it up a lot more than it is. So you can see it's not like blindingly bright. It'd be just fine for the cribs. I think they'll be happy long term. I will more than likely separate them out because I have some other tanks I'm going to be setting up here in a few months. They did all pair up very quickly and find their own dwellings, which is fantastic. That's a huge relief that I'm not going to have any loners that are hanging out and don't have anywhere to go. So they gave me a good ratio of males and females, which I appreciate. They will probably squabble a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. I have kept lots of cribs in the same tank before and it wasn't a problem but just because this isn't a huge tank it's only 38 gallons this is 36 inches long by 12 inches wide and i think 18 inches high i believe it's not a ton of space so i think just having the one paired here would probably be better and the others will go off into other tanks but give that some time and see what happens with them oh and they're all eating which is really good where are you going come on show everybody how pretty you are they ate almost as soon as i put them in the tank actually kind of interesting i put them in the tank and they paired up almost instantly and went their own ways they still kind of go around and explore and say hi to each other social little butterflies what i noticed though is that two of them that were over here almost immediately started doing a little spawning dance with the female colored up, the male got really bright and vivid and they were circling each other and flashing their fins. I was, I was surprised to see that. Also kind of gross because I know y'all are siblings. Ew, stop it. Oh, and there's that pearl weed that I was talking about when I was unpacking things. There's two clumps right here and then two more clumps right over here. And they are very full and very lush. Beautiful plants, Kendra, she was right. They look really great. Oh, and they sent me four. I only ordered three, so that was a nice bonus. All right, turning the lights back on, so there's going to be some reflections, but I think that tank time is over. I'm happy with it. Like I said, though, I do want to change that background and probably scoot the heater over towards the end where the filter is. That would probably look nicer and disperse the temperature more evenly. I'm excited about it. This has been a long time in the making. I've had like gathering supplies for quite a while, not like heaters and filters. I have tons of those. 
but just getting various rocks that I thought might look nice in the tank, making sure I had some hides for the cribs. They really, the coconuts always seem to work well for the crib enzies for a lot of dwarf cichlids and uh, clay pots. Play plots with holes broken in them. They usually appreciate those too. Ooh, so thanks for hanging out through all that chaos. This was a weird video to film because I was working on this video, like vlogging through this video at the same time as I was filming the vlog that came out the week before. But I wanted to make sure things were fluid so that they were separate into different videos. This kind of worked out that way, but not fully. And then I switched up my mic in the beginning and that that was a disaster but it worked out well i think it looks nice i'm going to enjoy being able to sit here and appreciate this while i'm taking care of the plants also fish water great for plants when i do water changes that water is just probably going straight into the eureka palm it's going to love that you get that nice fishy water in there it's got plenty of nutrients in it for it to enjoy get some nice lush growth out of the plant. Oh, and the moss. I didn't show the moss. I didn't bother putting this in the tank yet because I will probably want to glue this down onto some wood or onto some small pebbles. So I'm gonna wait for the driftwood to finish releasing its tannins before I mess that. This can stay in the cup for a while. It'll be okay. And I also have a big bucket of moss over here that I harvested from the tank in the house. It's the fungus gnats. They seem to be flying all around that. They're loving it. They love that nice wet moss. Nasty little bugs. Okay, and last thing. It's been several days since the shot where I cut all that hair off, cut the grass back on top of this planter, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I don't know if I should have divided up those roots. It's fine. I don't really know why I doubted it. It's just something about it felt wrong to me, but it's, you can see all this from like here to up there. It's all new growth, so it's totally fine. Worked out, no problem. I know doing fish stuff on the plant channel might not seem fitting, but there is a pretty big overlap between the communities, between the fish people and the plant people. And uh, I showed a lot of these plants when they came in the mail. Some of them are going to be remaining in the tank for the aquascape, but a lot of them are for terrariums. Even though they're sold as plants you put in your fish tank, pretty much everything I mentioned, I don't know about the pearl weed. I think the pearl weed could, but the java ferns that's over there, that Anubias, those are all great plants to be using in terrarium. So there is some overlap here. It's actually a lot of overlap. A lot of the principles that go into keeping fish are similar with plants, like knowing the nitrogen cycle is a useful thing to it. I mean, you don't really need to know the nitrogen cycle of plants, but it helps when trying to understand soil health and fertilizers and those sorts of things. And that nitrogen cycle applies both to soil and to the water and just the, the tranquility and nature-y part of it. It does all that too. What is an aquarium but an aquatic terrarium? Oh, that's where the term comes from. Yeah, it didn't really occur to me. That's what that is. It's an aquatic terrarium, an aquatic ecosystem. That, 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 just, okay, all right, I feel dumb right now. Let's have a look at the bucket, oh yeah. Yeah, this stuff still has a ways to go until I'm going to put it in the tank. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. That's only been soaking in there for about five hours. I've dumped this daily for about five days. It's still, still releasing those tannins. That's okay. That's just what driftwood does. Releases all that fun stuff into the water. Don't worry, this isn't turning into a fish channel. This is just, it's a vlog. And this is what was going on this week. Plant stuff and fish stuff. It's not going to be a regular thing. Oh, they're so stinking cute. They're going to do a lot of coloring up as they grow. And if they get some darker substrate and a darker background on here too. Beautiful fish. Just going to take a while to get to see their colors. But even when they're washed out, I still think they're really pretty. And I know I need to put this pot upright, but I have lotion on my hands. So that's just going to have to stay there till morning. It'll be fine. It's only for a few hours. Okay, there's one. There you go. You can kind of see that really pretty orange eyelid, orangish red eyelid. Beautiful fish. The males get really vibrant when they're breeding and the females, their bellies swap with like a really pretty like purple marble when they get full of eggs. Just fun, fun fish. Oh, and those cones, that may have seemed like a random thing to mention. Those need to, so you can't see that. Nope, can't see it. Terrarium people, you will appreciate these. Aren't these stinking adorable? Called alder cones. They're just teeny tiny, itty bitty pine, well not pine cones, alder cones. They're itty bitty. You can put them in your shrimp tanks, put them in your terrariums, put them in your aquariums. Gives the fish something to scavenge around and it releases some stuff into the water. Not much, but something. And they're so stinking cute. Freaking adorable. Wouldn't that look fun in a planter that has like a, like pine trees and a little forest scene? Th these would be very cute in a lot of different arrangements and planters and little fairy gardens. Tiny little baby cones. All right, thanks for hanging out. Time to wrap this one up. You can see it's dark out. This project took quite a while. 
just because I wanted to make sure that this water, even though it's all cycled and the majority of everything that's in here is cycled with the good bacteria, like I was talking about, I wanted to make sure that that at least had like five to ideally 10 days to run before putting the fish in, just to be safe. Really, probably wasn't necessary, but just to be safe. Comment down below, say hi. Fish stuff, yep, fellow fish nerds. There were a lot of rock nerds out there last week. I appreciated that. Y'all my people. Loving the rocks, probably the fish too. The fish and the plants. Oh no, no, there was one more thing, the Gloriosum. Been trying to give a weekly, I dumped the wee grass in there. It was next to the deaths and I just, I probably shouldn't have done that, but it's, it seems okay so far. Here's the weekly update on what's going on with that Gloriosum. A lot of progress since last time you saw it, which was just a few days ago in last week's vlog. It's doing some things, seems happy, it's gonna be okay. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Having a nice weekend, what you up to? Garden and stuff, we're almost there. Almost spring, it's gonna be here pretty soon. Cannot wait, super excited, really wanna get outside. Oh, I would mentioned moving some plants outside this week. I ended up not doing that because in the 10 day forecast, it's gonna drop into the upper teens, maybe low 20s, which is fine for the plants that I was referring to, but they've been in here where it's in the upper 70s and low 80s, and I just thought that'd be too much of a shock. So they're gonna hang out in here for a couple more weeks. That's why I didn't, that's why that didn't happen. Okay, all right, that's enough. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.